Hey, what's going on guys? Come check out this 2023 Kia Sorenta Hybrid EX all-wheel driver. We're going to be talking about the exterior, the interior, and some specs in this review, but a quick snapshot of the exterior and interior right now. Now guys, follow us here at Vagabond Builds and let's go ahead and start this review. The 2023 Kia hybrid ex all-wheel drive sorento and like mentioned we are going to talk about this car in this review video but before we do if you guys do like our content please tap that like button subscribe to our channel because it is not a sponsored video and we are not salespeople. okay so we're not trying to sell you we're just bringing you guys the car to take a look so we really appreciate your guys support here at vagabond builds if you got something for us to film here's our email Email us so we could talk details later. A special shout out and a thanks to Roseville Kia for providing us this car for this review. Now guys, keep watching and stay tuned. We're gonna be dropping that MSRP sticker with the price tag on this exact car so you guys get an idea of the exact package this car comes with and the price tag on top. Now let's talk Kia Sorento. Now let's talk specs. 1.6 liter turbocharged hybrid system, one electric motor pushing 227 horsepower with 258 pounds feet of torque, everybody. Now, some more specs. You get a six-speed automatic transmission. A little bit about the MPG is 36 city, 33 highway, and a 34 combined. That gives you a 637 mile range on a 17.7 .7 gas tank size. That is a doozy. Now, all-wheel drive with center locking differential on this exact EX all-wheel drive, but of course you have a front-wheel drive standard option, all right? Now, take that into consideration. My best advice to anybody would be get the all-wheel drive because it's just awesome to have it when you're needing it. For example, like you're going camping or up to the mountains to ski or snowboard for the weekend. Now, let's talk front end. From the LED lighting to the black gloss front grille, lower grille in that same black gloss, bumper sensors integrated into that lower side of that front bumper. You get the fog lights in the LED lighting and the daytime running lights. We left the hazards and the lights so you guys get an idea of exactly what it looks like when the front end is alive, all right? so. That's the front end. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. But giving it some more sportier look with the cuts and the airflow vents coming over to that wheel well, cooling off that braking system. But honestly, everybody, if you ask me, it's for the Kia brand, giving it a very kind of nice, aggressive, and sporty front end look. Coming over to the side, take a look at this. 2023 Sportage EX all-wheel drive. Now, coming from that lower uh, front bumper, you got that matte black plastic trim that connects over to this wheel well in that kind of textured matte black plastic. Very durable, so it does last a long time. Parking marker integrated into that trim. And if we drop down to the dual color rim, gunmetal gray in that kind of glossy look with the machine surface silver. You're running Continental Cross Contact wheels at 235-55-19s for anybody who wants to know the size of the tire. Now, some trim work here, adding some more character, not so plain on the car. The side mirror itself comes blind spot assist with integrated lighting into the side mirror in two colors, black gloss to match the front end coming in over to the side and finishing off over to the rear, all right? keyless door entry with the same color as the car. A lot of times we'd be seeing um, certain handles on different manufacturers in two colors. Dropping to the lower side of these door panels, matte black plastic trim coming in from the front to the wheel well, all the way over to the side in this kind of rocker panel area. And that kind of hyper silver trim on top of that black plastic. Over to the gas tank, you push that gas tank and you open up that lid and you still have a gas lid or sorry a gas cap you see sometimes where manufacturers are getting rid of gas caps up top those hyper silver roof rails coming over from the front all the way to the back trim in that silver all around the windows with the black gloss in between now 
over to the rear end, everybody. Again, we left those hazards on so you guys get an idea of how these tail lights look. Kind of dual rectangular shaped tail lights that come in slightly over to the quarter panel. Now, if you do ask me, it kind of reminds me of the old body style Range Rovers, right? Because you kind of have that same exact shape coming into the quarter panel. Let me know what you guys think about that also in the comment section below. But some cuts, giving it some more sportier look. Character, character, character that Kia puts in this Sorento. Now, if we start from the bottom to the top, bottom, it looks like you have a dual tip exhaust, but it is not a dual tip exhaust, all right? It's just kind of an aesthetic look where the exhaust itself is on the passenger side of the car. Parking reflectors, bumper sensors integrated into that matte black plastic trim, all right, going across that lower bumper cover. Sorento emblem on the driver's side with the HEV on the right passenger, letting you know it's a hybrid. Continuing up, you have the backup camera right under the Kia emblem. Kia emblem in that hyper silver look. And then the spoiler it, with the integrated brake lighting system. But, but hey, everybody, it's tucked in windshield wiper, giving it more of a minimalist look. So not, not only that it's sporty, kind of aggressive look, but they get rid of all those little tacky things like that windshield wiper here on the bottom of that glass where they tuck it away and hide it, which is a very good idea, I say. Now let's go ahead and pop open this tailgate. Now we come up to the seating or the cargo area, sorry. I'm gonna lift these up. Now, if we talk about cargo area with the third row seats up, you get about 12 cubic feet of cargo area. Now, if you were to drop that third row down, you get 30, about 38 cubic feet of cargo area. And if you were to drop the second row down, and how do you do that from the back? This little control unit panel here, you can literally go ahead and drop that and drop the right one up oh, and then drop all the way but a full 75 cubic feet of space. So if you wanna fit like a washer or a dryer, two by fours, bikes, snowboards, skis, whatever you want, you have the room because the entryway to this cargo area is pretty big and wide, all right? So not only that you have those electric buttons for that second row, you have a 12 volt outlet here next to it. If we go ahead and show you the center, your spare tire is under the car, so don't comment in the comment section below and ask me where the spare tire is because I get a lot of those. And your tire situation going on there with some little more cubby room, a kind of a hide spot for your stuff. Some hooks for bunging down groceries, things of that sort. More hooks up here and pretty simple, straight to the point otherwise. Now, two buttons here, one to lock the tailgate and one to close it automatically. Let's go ahead and do that. Now that we're done talking about specs, exterior, and some cargo area, let's go ahead and jump inside this car and talk interior. So now in the inside interior of the Sorento, now let's talk interior, okay? Get a load of the angles, the more rectangular square shape with the vents, the screen pop-up coming out of your dashboard with your front cluster in that fully rectangular shape look, coming in over again to the trim all around with the door handles and all that good stuff. But let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Starting with the door panel. Pretty, you know, I would say simple door panel, but they do add some character into the door panel with that kind of design with that diamond um, design. You get that here, on your dashboard and on the door sill kick plate, door sill kick plates, all right? So you see that in multiple areas of the car. Control units for your window and your control unit for your side mirror. Down below on the door panel, you get some personal space and a cup holder, your handle right to your left and your armrest. Pretty good um, height as you're leaning to the left for that armrest. In front of you, you have your cluster, manual tachometers to the right and the left, your charge, eco, and power uh, distribution tachometer, and then you have your miles per hour. But in the middle, you can control that info card with your control here on the steering wheel, 
miles per hour, your engine temperature, your dist uh, power distribution to your all-wheel drive system, and all that. But for the sake of the time of the video, I'm not gonna get into all this, but shoot over to Roseville Kia because they have some pretty awesome guys that'll sit and kind of go over the ins and outs of this car. On the steering wheel, it is in that Syntex uh, material wrapped steering wheel with the kind of gray, dark gray stitching, paddle shifting, with your windshield wiper control and your lighting control and fog light control. On the left-hand side of the manual steering column, you get your uh, tailgate lift button, so you can open the tailgate from here, your traction control lane assist button, and then your lighting to dim or increase your lighting on the dashboard. 10.25 inch infotainment screen. All right, I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit about this. You go to over to map, full screen map, you can split the screen and make it, you know, your audio screen or go down. But, sorry, there you go. And then weather, all that. So you can also do that or make it full screen. I like the full screen map. Go home and then we can go into like setup and then go to vehicle. Check out all your, um, you know, driver assistance, driver convenience, forward safety, and all that good stuff. And then we go back to home, go to your hybrid system. Kind of slight lag, but fuel economy, electric motor use, and all that stuff, okay? Go further down, we have your control unit for your uh, temperature, dual climate control. You can turn that off with this button. The rear defroster, front defroster, Dropping down, popping this lid open, you get USB-A plugins, three of them, all right? USB and then one to your right and left. Up, oh, that sign is going to let me know that the car is going to turn off because it's just sitting in um, no usage mode. But you have um, a wireless charging pad. You could hardly see it, but there's a wireless charging pad here to the right or the passenger side of this little cubby room. Heated seats on this right and left of the walls of the center council. Your knob for going in through different reverse neutral drive. Sorrento written here on that kind of hyper flat silver look. Now, let's go ahead and start this car. And look at this. You can actually go through different drive modes. Snow, Sport, Smart, and Eco. All right, let's go ahead and show you guys snow. You're gonna get a little character knob there on. Let's go ahead and leave it in sport. Parking sensors button, hill decline assist. You have your camera. If you wanna press that, you can go ahead and check out what's behind you and your engine auto hold. Parking button in a very convenient spot, so I'm not looking here on the left, but it's right here. As I drop it in park, I can just pull that parking button up. Now, some cubby room with a removable tray for your personal belongings and the seats. So both seats are electric controlled, perforated Syntex uh, material, so it's not real leather. And you get those kind of triangular perforated looks. So coming in over from that uh, dashboard design that I mentioned, along with that door panel design, you get that same look on the seat itself. Very cool. No sunroof in the EX, but you get some lighting up in the front. Let me go ahead and show you guys that in that soft yellow lighting. Now we're pretty much done with the front side. Let's go ahead and talk second and third row seating in this Sorento. All right, now second row seating. In this Sorento, you have the second row in the captain's seating, and that means armrests with a little bit of aisle way to get to that third row seating. Perforated look in that same design coming in over from the front to the back. Car seat compatibility with some pockets on the middle of the seat so for like chapstick and things of that sort maybe your wallet or some toys in front of both of these seats more pocket room on the back of both of the front seats now you have kind of a dual pocket meaning you get the net and then you also have that pocket that maybe you got to hide some stuff in there in between both seats you get the usb a's on the back of the front seats those nice little square shaped vents and under more USB-A charging port and a 12 volt, 180 watt outlet, all right? Let me show you how you control this captain seat on the second row. You got a lever to the left of the driver and then to the right of the passenger. You go ahead and 
drop that. You can control it that way. Okay. And then you have a lever here and you can control it forward and back. And then there's a button for the third row seat for the personnel who is in or on the third row seat. You can go ahead and bunny hop the seat forward. Check this out. You press that button and it bunny hops, granting you access over to the third row seating or on the way out so people aren't yelling, hey, you forgot about me back here. Now, let's go ahead, close this up and show you guys. I'm about six feet, two inches, okay? Some leg room here. It's completely there. Head clearance, I ain't even talking about it because there is just a bunch of head clearance. Little light in that soft yellow right in the middle. Your O snap handle to the right or left and the door panel, same look coming over from the front to the back. You can drop the angle on this seat. So long road trip car, check, okay? Now I'm gonna just kind of prop this up just kind of to be in the center. And I'm gonna shoot over to the third row seats to show you guys how it looks back there. Now let's go ahead and bunny hop that forward. And now on the third row seating. Being kind of centered second, uh, centered um, position, for that second seat. Now, a little bit more squished back here. I will mention that, so your smaller people are gonna be in the car, the kiddos and things of that sort. But the head, I am touching this little kind of decline area on the um, top liner. That's something to take into consideration. And then you got some lighting back here. A little light, you know, maybe you wanna read something in that soft yellow. To the right and the left of the bench, you have cup holders and some more room. It has kind of a little, hey, don't put your cup here because it's not a cup holder sign. There's one right next to it, all right? This is for the back to drop those second row seats. USB-A plug-in on the right and on the left. So nobody's fighting back here, mom or dad. So pretty much let me know what you guys think about this car in the comment section below. If you got any comments, questions, concerns, I'll try to get back to you guys as best as possible. Now, as promised, we're gonna be dropping that MSRP sticker and the price tag so you guys get an idea of what exactly comes with this car and that price on top. Stay tuned, keep watching our channel. We appreciate your guys' support here at Vagabond Builds. God bless you guys.